Today, we're diving into a topic that's both intriguing and deeply significant. The mysterious occurrences involving demons worldwide, as depicted in the Bible. As we journey through the scriptures, we'll uncover profound insights into the spiritual realm and how it intersects with our world today. So, grab your Bible, and let's embark on this enlightening exploration together. To understand the current state of demonic activity, we must first ground ourselves in Scripture. Ephesians 6 verse 12 reminds us that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. This verse elucidates the ongoing spiritual battle that transcends physical reality. Demonology is one of the most avoided subjects within Christian sermons and teachings. This silence regarding the topic is intriguing, especially considering that our Lord Jesus Christ himself did not shy away from teaching about demons and engaging with them directly during his ministry on earth. The reluctance to explore or discuss demonology within Christianity is perplexing. Why would believers choose to ignore a topic that our Lord and Savior deemed significant enough to address? The truth is, burying our heads in the sand does not alter the reality of demons. It neither diminishes nor exaggerates their existence. They are real, and a very real part of this world we live in. Demonology is the study of demons focusing on their origins, nature, and the various ways they interact with the world. Christian demonology, more specifically, delves into what the Bible teaches us about these malevolent entities. It provides a framework for understanding the realm of the demonic, grounded in scripture, rather than the sensationalism often found in popular culture. This branch of theological study equips believers with knowledge about demons, revealing their characteristics, behaviors, and the strategies they employ in their war against God, his angels, and humanity. At its core, Christian demonology teaches us that Satan and his demons are real and they can and do affect our world in a very real and tangible way. They are not abstract concepts or symbols of evil, but real, personal beings with a will, intellect, and a profound hostility toward God, humanity, and all that is good. These beings have chosen to rebel against their Creator, and in doing so have become the adversaries of humanity, seeking to lead us away from God through deception, temptation, and oppression. Understanding Christian demonology is crucial for several reasons. Firstly, it removes the veil of mystery that often surrounds the topic of demons, demystifying their existence and operations. The truth is, you cannot fight an enemy you do not know exists or any enemy you do not even believe exists. This demystification is vital for dispelling fear and superstition, which can cloud our judgment and lead to either an unhealthy fascination with the demonic or an outright denial of their existence. Secondly, Christian demonology serves as a tool for spiritual warfare. It alerts us to the reality of Satan's schemes and the tactics employed by his minions in their relentless campaign against God's kingdom. By understanding how demons operate, believers can better guard themselves against spiritual deception and attack, standing firm in their faith and equipped with the full armor of God. Something strange is happening to demons worldwide. This statement might evoke curiosity or even skepticism, but within the context of Christian demonology, it underscores a profound truth that has been evident since ancient times and remains so today. This truth is vividly captured in James 2.19, which states that the devils also believe and tremble. This verse, succinct yet deeply evocative, brings to the forefront the intense reaction of demons to the truth of God's existence. They believe and they tremble. The focus on the aspect of trembling reveals much about the nature of demons, the power of God, and the implications for believers. The term tremble conveys a sense of fear, anxiety, or agitation so intense that it cannot be concealed. It signifies a physical manifestation of a deep-seated terror. But what exactly instigates such a profound reaction from these malevolent beings? It is not merely the acknowledgement of God's existence, 
but the full recognition of his absolute sovereignty, holiness, and the inevitable judgment that awaits them. Unlike humans, who might waver in faith or understanding, demons possess an acute awareness of God's omnipotence and the ultimate futility of their rebellion. In all honesty, we can learn a lot from this. We live in a world that does not fear the Lord, a world that even goes as far as to mock God, a world that does not tremble at the name of the Lord a world that does not tremble at the fact that a holy God is angry with them, a world that does not believe that there is a God. However, rest assured, my brothers and sisters, a time is coming where every individual who does not tremble at the name of the Lord will bow down and confess that Jesus is Lord. But, if the truth be told, this is because the people of this world do not truly understand who God is. Time and time again we are reminded to fear the Lord, Matthew 10, 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell, Hebrews 10, 31. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God, Proverbs 9, 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. This knowledge, coupled with the certainty of their defeat and punishment, instills in them a terror so profound that it causes them to tremble. The trembling of demons is a testament to the power and majesty of God. He is the Creator who spoke the universe into existence, whose holiness is unapproachable by sin, and whose justice is unwavering. The demons possess an intimate understanding of His might. An understanding of God and His glory is something that we human beings don't fully grasp. I do believe that we, even as Christians, often take God for granted. God is so far above us, as far as the heavens are from the earth, as far as the north is from the south. That is how far above us God is. He exists in a realm of His own, a class of His own. He is not a glorified man. Often, we try to make the Lord Jesus Christ into a glorified man or a glorified prophet so that he operates just slightly above us and so that we can still understand him with our limited minds. But you can't fully understand God. You can't understand a being that has lived from everlasting to everlasting. You cannot understand a being whose commands the winds and waves obey. You cannot understand a being who sits in a realm outside of time. You cannot understand a being who has no beginning. You and I have a beginning. Angels and demons have a beginning. The heavens and the earth have a beginning. However, God doesn't. He is from age to age, from generation to generation. Before there was a beginning, He was there. Their rebellion has not obscured God's omnipotence from their perception. Rather, it has accentuated the reality of His supreme authority. They tremble, not out of reverence, but out of fear, fully cognizant of their opposition to the Almighty. This profound fear of God manifested by demons is not an abstract concept, but a tangible reality that has implications for believers. The encounter described by the professor serves as a stark reminder of the spiritual warfare that believers are engaged in. It underscores the authority in the name of Jesus, a name that even the demonic forces recognize and fear. It is a name above all names, the name of Jesus.